So, how much would it cost Uber and Lyft if we were to become employees? Hey everyone, this is Kevin the Entrepreneur, and the question has actually come up several times in the forums, in the comments, and other videos. How much money would Uber and Lyft stand to lose if they made drivers independent contractors, not independent contractors, they turn them from independent contractors into employees? Because the other thing, we talk about all the time that how much drivers are losing, how much Uber is taking, and how drivers should really stop if they're not making any money. And that Uber should really just pay everyone a little bit better and everyone would be happy. However, we do have to acknowledge that there would be considerable costs with Uber and Lyft. The question is, how much are those costs and what would they lose if they actually had to implement them? And maybe what could they do if they had to implement them to not make the losses hurt so much? However, before we talk about any of that, let's have a word from our sponsors. And today's video is sponsored by Maximo, the rideshare automation app that allows drivers to safely and easily accept ride requests for Uber, Lyft, and Postmates. Whether you drive for a single platform or multiple platforms, Maximo's custom settings can help you drive more efficient, less distracted, and help you maximize your earnings. It will automatically accept one trip, turn off the other apps, and when your trip is over, it will end it, open the other apps, and accept the next trip, all without you having to touch your phone. Use referral code APP60 and get your first month free when you subscribe to Maximo. Here's a Quartz article and it says how much it would cost Uber and Lyft if drivers were employees. So that's actually what we're really talking about here. Uh, sorry, a little bit of, uh, you know, sleight of hand. However, the expenses of Uber and Lyft are still your expenses right now and that's why we're talking about it. So Uber and Lyft are scared. A bill passed by the California Assembly seems likely to classify Uber and Lyft drivers as employees instead of their current status as independent contractors. Under guidelines laid out in the bill, which is now with the state Senate, ride hail drivers would likely fail the contractor test because they don't perform work, quote, outside the usual course of the hiring entity's business. Put another way, drivers drive and driving is essential to Uber and Lyft. On June 12th, Uber and Lyft's top executives took the extraordinary step of co-authoring an op-ed in the San Francisco Chronicle that pushes back on the bill and promises to improve work quality and job security for the drivers, which is a day too late and a dollar too short. That's my opinion. That's not what's added here. The rare public alliance between Uber CEO Dar Karshahi and Lyft co-founders Logan Green and John Zimmer, whose companies are bitter rivals in the U.S., is the clearest sign of how seriously these companies are taking the legislative threat. Uber and Lyft's businesses valued together at nearly $100 billion by the public markets. I, I love now they can actually say the public markets value these companies at this much money. So, you know, not completely bad for going public. Um, depend entirely on the view that their drivers are independent contractors, not employees. Why? Employees are expensive. For loss-making Uber and Lyft, perhaps prohibitively so. Employees are protected by federal and local minimum wage laws. They also get health care benefits and their employer pays various taxes towards Social Security, unemployment and other social services. What's more, if drivers were employees, they could form a union and bargain collectively. They would likely have less flexibility with their schedules and be less available to work for multiple platforms, as many now do. For now, though, let's focus on just the cost of the companies. In a report earlier this week, Equity research analysts at Barclays estimated that reclassifying workers could cost Uber and Lyft an additional $3,625 per driver in California. That's enough to boast Uber's annual operating loss by more than $500 million and Lyft's by $290 million. Any wide-scale reclassification of drivers to employees would be a material negative for the ride hail and further put into question the long-term profitability of the industry the analysts wrote. Yes, because long term, that is the big question mark. Can they actually make money long term? Let's break it down. First, Barclays looked at the additional payroll taxes and training costs Uber and Lyft would have to pay if their drivers became employees. Barclays based its estimates on a part time driver who averages $15,600 a year in ride hail income, $20 an hour for 15 hours a week, 52 weeks a year. Well, not bad. Not going to lie. That's not too bad, although it should be noted that $15,000 is still a little too low to actually make a living off of just maybe he doesn't care maybe that's just like fifteen thousand dollars in beer money which if that that's the case uh hey good for you buddy but uh yeah we that's not a livable wage anyway the reclassification cost uh uber and lyft pretty much the same 967 dollars medicare 226 actually all these numbers are the same i don't know why they bother to separate them 
Uh, the federal unemployment is 147. Uh, state unemployment 238. Training seven dollars. Total per employee uh, 1,585 dollars. So Barclay estimates Uber has 140 thousand drivers in California and Lyft 80,000. That applies Uber would owe about 222 million in payroll taxes and training costs each year and Lyft's 127 million if drivers were considered employees. In fact, let's just get a uh, uh, a regular, let's just actually get a number on that. Let's open up the calculator app right here. There we go. Uh, oops, accidentally opened. Two two of them and shrink it down a little bit. So let's see here. So we have 100, 400,000 plus uh, 80,000 times 1,585 and uh, eh, let's add a cent in there just for the heck of it because, you know, unexpected expenses. Um, oh no, actually the... Uh, yeah, that's a. Uh, <laughs> this is how much money that they uh, might actually. <laughs> oh, that's a. Uh, oh boy, or maybe I could have. Maybe I could have just <laughs> done that. <laughs> anyway, so there we go. That's basically that's a lot of money. I mean, like, yeah, look at that. That's a. That's a lot of money. Additional every year. Now the funny thing about this, when you think about it, because Uber's like. And Lyft are both losing like a billion dollars every three months. So there's a part of me that kind of goes like, well, you're already losing $4.5 billion a year. What's another 300 million more? Our stockholders probably won't see it that way. So next Barclay, Barclays broke out costs related to California workers' compensation insurance, which employee, employers in the state are legally required to provide. At a midpoint rate for the taxi and limousine industry, Barclays estimates both Uber and Lyft are looking at another $2,040 sorry, $2,040 employee per year. That works out to about 200, yeah, let's just add this up. 286 million and 163. So, okay, yeah, we're starting to um, we're starting to crack up a little bit. Add the payroll taxes to the worker comp costs and you get a total annual employee related cost of about 508 million for Uber and 290 million for Lyft. So we're, uh, despite what it says right there, we're, uh, we're at the <laughs> 1.5 billion mark right now. Such costs would be a significant hit to both the companies. Uber reported an operating loss of 1 billion in the first quarter of 2019, Barclays expects the companies to post an operating loss of $3.9 billion for the full year, 30% more than the $3 billion loss in 2018. If drivers were to become employees in California, Barclays thinks that Uber's 2019 operating loss would widen to $4.4 billion, which, uh, again, not, not to, I'm not saying that's nothing. That, that, that's $4.4 billion is a lot of money for the whole year. However, it's not that much more than what they already lose. Now, granted, I know the whole idea is like they want to make money. I totally understand that. Please don't call about that. Here's the thing, though. They have been losing this $4 billion every year pretty much consistently. So what's a little bit more at this point? The relative impact is even worse for Lyft, which operates only in the U.S. and therefore has more risk, con risk concentrated in California. As things stand, Barclay expects Lyft to lose $1.2 billion in 2019 versus a loss of $980 million the year before. If drivers were to become employees, however, Barclay thinks the loss could climb to $1.5 billion this year. Both Uber and Lyft warned in their investor prospectuses before going public that their businesses would be adversely affected if drivers were classified as employees instead of independent contractors. Uber noted such a change would lead to, quote, significant additional expenses potentially including minimum wage, overtime, meal and rest period requirements, employee benefits, payroll taxes, and social security contributions, and, quote, require us to fundamentally change our business model. Lyft cautioned that it may need to revise our pricing methodologies to account for such a change to driver classification. In other words, if drivers are deemed employees in the state of California, the companies will probably pass some of that cost on to customers by making the rides more expensive, which they should have done anyway. So anyway, yeah, there's the, uh, there's, there's the chart. So look, here's the thing. 
I would obviously, in a perfect world, prefer Uber and Lyft not be regulated. However, the reason I even push for it is because it's the only way they're going to listen. Look, we are threatening their business model. We are literally threatening how they make money. We are about to cost them an extra $0.5 billion in expenses. And they don't want to do the right thing. They don't want to say, hey, you know what? It's not working. Let's figure out something else. Let's raise some prices. Let, let's take a little less out of this. Let's pay our employees better. Let's get them out of our hair. Let's maybe cut some costs. I mean, the Uber helicopter. Well, okay, that's where we're working. But like this whole food delivery by drone, maybe we put that on hold, especially since you still need the drivers in San Diego. Anyway, there's things Uber could be doing to make us happy so that we're not pushing for this. And yet they won't even do that. That big open letter did not address wages. It just said, hey, we'll give you benefits. Retirement. Yay. It's like, no, 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 no. They want more money. They want more cheddar. They don't want you to take, heck, you know what? Here's how you can raise rates without changing your, your scale. Just charge 20%. Just charge 20%. Take your 20% fee and let the drivers have the rest. Because, hey, you know what? When we see those screenshots that say, oh, the ride cost, you know, $80, but Uber took 60 of it. Well, you know what? Honestly, the driver would work out a lot, would be a lot happier if they only had $8 taken out or $9.50 if you want to do closer to the 25%. Uber would still get a fee for essentially doing nothing, by the way. And the driver would make a cool $70 for one ride. That works out to be a win-win situation. Uber could do this. So can Lyft for that matter. And by the way, Lyft, uh, thank you for, by the way, finally bringing the prime, the personal zones to my area where I essentially will not be getting any prime time. However, I will be getting those little two, three dollars personal zones that don't really work. And you know, they don't work. So I guess I'm not driving for Lyft anytime soon. Lyft still sucks worse than Uber. So... Yeah, this is just, this is the reality. This is what Uber and Lyft should have been trying to avoid all this time, and they didn't do it until regulation was literally knocking on their doorstep. And even if this bill doesn't pass, guess what? There will be another one. So Uber and Lyft, if you dodge this bullet, if this bill does not get passed, you have got to pay your drivers better because the next bill that comes through will pass, and then you will be screwed. However, that's my opinion. What says you? Do you agree, disagree? I would love to know. Comment below, like, favorite, share, subscribe. If you enjoy my videos, consider becoming a Patreon member. It's totally optional, of course, but even as little as $1 a month goes a long way to helping the channel run smoothly and you get access to my Patreon's exclusive blog. Also, if gas prices are getting you just a little down, check out the GetUpside app below. It's totally free, but you get cash back on every gas purchase. Consider subscribing to the Entrepreneur Vlogs channel, which has more content from me, a little different from what's on this channel, so that's always a good thing. And finally, if you want to talk to me or LFO, other fellow rideshare people, check us out at the Entrepreneur Hangouts on Facebook. And as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one.